Hi everyone, this video will walk you through the point cloud mapping function. Firstly, open the model and click on point cloud mapping. You can choose the device model, S1 or P1. For S1, scanning scenes include outdoor, indoor, and vehicle modes. For P1, scanning scenes include outdoor and indoor modes. The mapping model can be either general or target mode. Now we take S1 for indoor scanning and general mode as an example. At the bottom left corner, there are advanced settings where you can enable or disable the back to starting point function. In the actual scanning process, if you close the loop, but the point cloud mapping doesn't, you can enable the back to starting point function. And you can also enable or disable the dynamic object removal feature here. Upon enabling dynamic object removal, moving people and objects will be deleted. For RTK receiver offsets, you can set it when using RTK for scanning in backpack or vehicle modes, and you can enter the modified values here. In the standard mode, you don't need to edit it here as there are no changes to the RTK position. Once the setup is completed, click Next to proceed. Following this, we will create a project. Firstly, input the name of the project, then select the raw data file. By default, the project will be saved in the path of the raw data file. For mapping range, it defaults to 1-90M, and you can modify it as needed. When collecting RTK data in the vehicle or backpack mode, you can enable the RTK fusion function. After enabling it, you can convert the coordinate system. There are two ways to do this. The first one is that we receive the FJ8 RTK data directly when downloading, then we can import it directly or search for the target coordinate system to convert it into the local coordinate system. We will obtain the geo-referenced coordinate system point cloud data. In this demo data, there is no RTK collection, so we won't import it here. The second way is to select the corresponding coordinate system directly here, and you can choose the coordinate system as needed. If you need a coordinate system, you can find it in the drop-down menu. If there is no desired option, you can also customize it here. Choose the custom coordinate system. On the expanded page, you can set the projection parameters and mode. The projection modes include Gaussian projection and UTM projection. You can edit the ellipsoid parameters and get the required coordinate system. If you still want to convert to the local coordinate system, you can import parameters here for the conversion. Of course, you can also manually input the conversion parameters. Since we don't use RTK here, we choose not to enable it. We can choose to enable the control point optimization feature. Then, we need to input the control point coordinates. This feature is generally used when we use the base to collect target points. And we need to input the control points corresponding to the target points here. After completion, click OK to create a map. Then you can see the progress bar of the map creation. The screen will display the point cloud data of the map creation, and you can rotate or drag to view the data. After the map is created, the point cloud will be displayed on the screen, and the data file is saved in the data folder. This is the point cloud data file that we have created, and this is our introduction to the point cloud mapping function.